Yeah, right. Uh, so thank you for the previous talk. It was about the introduction of GraphQL and I will try to go way deeper into GraphQL and focus my talk on real time. Uh, why to talk about real time? Uh, because GraphQL is great to replace your REST API, but once you replace your REST API, you will have your socket.io or your real time framework still in place. So you will have a duplicated source of truth. You will have your GraphQL API and your real time framework. But what you want to achieve with GraphQL real time is that you want to reuse your schema, your GraphQL schema, to push your updates to your client. And today, when you're developing a modern web application, you need an API and a real time uh, system. So I'm Pierre, I'm developer at Slide, a new, a new startup from eFounders, and we built a Note app designed for Teams. And we choose to start our project a year ago on Firebase, uh, because Firebase is great to kickstart your project. You have real-time updates, you can do queries, it manages your storage for you. But after eight months of development, we decided to rewrite all our code and to migrate to GraphQL in two months. And it was at the beginning of June, and it was the exact same time that GraphQL released the subscriptions. And we decided to go, okay, we'll do all the way. We will migrate our API and our real-time system from Firebase to GraphQL. And to do short, it worked. Uh, hopefully, it worked. Um, not quite hard to change that, but yeah, it worked. And now all our real-time system is based on uh, GraphQL. And I will go into the concept, how to set up your backend and your frontend to use uh, GraphQL real-time. So what's the concept? The concept is pretty basic. It's just a read solution. So it's a channel-based event. So your clients will listen to channels. So they won't have to subscribe to a very wide uh, communication channel. They will just select which channel they want to listen to. So it's channel-based. It will reuse your GraphQL schema. So you don't have to change how your data is formatted. Uh, it will handle the connections, so your clients will be connected, and GraphQL will keep track on which client is connected, and it will manage subscriptions, because one client can subscribe to multiple events at the same time, and it can decide to start a subscription and then stop it. And if you have to remember only one thing from this talk, uh, it's here, it's right here. So there is like two types, one type, which is Node. This is our, one, of, one of our core objects. So you can see that there is an ID, a creation date, a title. And then at the bottom of our schema, I will just add a type subscriptions. So this is an extension because we have over maybe 15 types of subscriptions. And I will declare three new types. A creation for when a new node is created, an update, and a deletion. So by just writing this, I just added three new type of subscription to my application, and it will be consumed by my clients by, by using this previous uh, defined type. So I don't know if you, if you understand what it means, but it means like mind blown, like you just reuse your schema to do the real time. So at the same place, you will have your queries your mutations, and your real-time framework at the same place. Uh, so that means that you won't be too asshole and to have a headache uh, when dealing with socket.io and your REST API. No, it's really, everything is in the same place. So when you will add a new feature, you, okay, it keep <laughs> too much focus. Um, so when you add a new feature, you will only have to change one single file with the query, the mutation, and the, the subscriptions. And it's quite powerful. Okay, so now I will go deeper on the backend architecture and then the front end, all right? And then a quick demo. Um, so this is, this is an architecture of a GraphQL server. You have the client, you have the network interface, your GraphQL schema, and your domain layer. As it was said, your domain layer is not 
the same part as the GraphQL. GraphQL is just the query language. The domain layer is your database access and everything. Uh, and when you add a subscription server, you will have three new, three new layers. A new layer, a bidirectional transport web socket, right? Uh, a subscription system. So when a new client, we want to listen to a channel, it will subscribe to your system and use your GraphQL schema to, to, to say, okay, I want to listen to these objects and I want to get these attributes in response when you will push me an event, all right? So this system track uh, everything. And then your domain layer will push events directly to this event layer and then resolve the active subscriptions and send that to the client, all right? So you have two parts. First part, the subscription server. Um, I go quick on that. It will, keep, it will keep track of your client. It will know who is connected, which user is using this connection, and it will send keep alive um, to maintain the connection open, okay? And then you have the pub sub. This is just at the bottom of the chart. Um, the pub sub is just a dummy object that will send your events and also add a scope uh, to filter the events. Because if you think about that, your client can start a connection and then maybe its permissions change and you don't want to, you want, you don't want to send him information that is not allowed to, to see or to watch. So you have to filter every, uh, every event before pushing that to the client. How you do that? When you're using the pub sub, okay, I think, well, it's hard to see, but basically just publish the event and then add your data and your scope. For me, it's like an array of user IDs and then I will be able to, to filter before, before sending uh, the event. Like it's code, but it's not very complicated. That's it for the server part. Next part, the client. Um, Hopefully, GraphQL give us, gives us a subscription transport, WS, which is a package for the backend and for the frontend. Uh, so this part is for the backend, and this part is for the frontend. So with this small package, you will be able to connect your GraphQL subscriptions to the framework you love. It can be Apollo, it can be Relay, it can be plain JavaScript, it doesn't matter. It's really just an interface. And then I choose to focus on Apollo because I quite like the simplicity uh, of Apollo. So you just describe a new subscription client and give that to Apollo and it will know what to do with it. And you define, of course, the endpoint because you will have a new endpoint for your subscriptions on your server, which is different from the actual HTTP GraphQL endpoint. And then this is the, the hard part, not the hard part, but how a client will be able to connect, start the subscriptions, and receive events. It's the most interesting part, I guess. Uh, it will start by initiating a new connection to the backend, and it will maybe will provide a token for authentication or additional data. And then it will keep, it will start to subscribe to events. So for example, it just start to subscribe to channel created and channel updated, but maybe 10, 10 more if, if, if you want. And then it can stop the subscriptions. And if you think about your application, your, your user will move from a page to another and it will be able to start subscriptions, for example, on a, when he's on the note, he will be able to subscribe on this particular note and on the list on the side. And when it will change from a note to another, he will be able to stop these subscriptions and start a new one. And it's really easy to do that, especially with React and GraphQL. And then it will receive Keep Alive to uh, maintain the connection. So now, how do I put this into my front end code? Um, I will just add a dummy component, uh, and when I mount this component, 
it will start the subscriptions. And when I will unmount it, it will be able to stop the subscriptions. And I will say, okay, all right, I want to start the subscriptions and I want to listen to the type not updated. And I will give all the attributes I need. So we don't maybe need to listen to all the attributes, not the required one. And I will define a new method called update query. And this method will be called every time there is an update uh, coming. And that's it, you're ready to go. Um, as, as one my teammate said, it just works. Like it's, it really works, it scales. Like we have over, over maybe 50 or 60 subscriptions uh, in production and it really works and easy to use, maintain and uh, develop. Yeah. So quick demo to, to show you that it works in production. Uh, yeah. All right. All right, so this is my note. So this is the WebSocket inspector. So you can, you can see that at the start, I will start a connection. So we are in WebSocket. And then I will start maybe 20 subscriptions to different types. I will subscribe to the profile update, the organization update, the note update. Um, and then I will receive Keep Alive, of course. And when I start a subscription, I will include in my subscription what GraphQL schema I want. Please, an interesting one. No. Yeah, it's hard to see, but when I restart subscription, I give all the schema as you just saw before. And yeah, I will just change the date here. Quite hard to do that with the microphone, but anyway. Right, change the title. And boom, I received nothing because it's a demo now. <laughs> okay, didn't work. I reload. Oh. Okay, no channel connection. Ta -da. Uh, what is the Wi Fi? You have the code of the Wi Fi? Real time? Okay. Uh, merci. All right. Telecommunication doesn't work. Never worked. I will just do it again, we will cut that. Uh, <laughs> we'll say it worked the first time. Uh, okay, so start from the beginning. I'm having, I'm having this note. We can see that we have this subscription here. You can see that I changed from a note to another. So our client stopped the subscriptions and started again for this new note. So you can see this, it, it worked. Um, and now I will change my title, I will add three new character. And yeah, it was updated and I have the data with the not updated. And inside my payload, actually I have all the field that I asked for with the update. It worked. All right, back to the keynote. It was a quick demo. So if you want to go further, I will send you the, the slide and I can recommend you to go to the RFC, which is really nice. It's, uh, it's from Facebook, of course, but it will give you a broader vision of what is GraphQL and uh, where they want to go with subscriptions. How you can maybe do queries with subscriptions. Uh, yeah, go there. And there is a demo and a quick how to, how to set up uh, and like a large example too. Uh, so now I will just thank you and shut up. Uh, if you want to test it live, it's available on slide.com. Uh, we don't have mobile apps still yet, but you can register online and we'll give you a link to download the app for desktop. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, you, you mentioned how uh, it was uh, 
basically noticing you when it has disconnected or reconnected. Yeah. But how about offline? I don't know if you guys need offline at Slight. I guess you do, maybe. But how, how do you handle offline? How do you resync the data or merge the data when it fell out of sync? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a great question. Uh, of course, also, offline is hard and we need to, uh, to manage it. And we don't do uh, really like, we don't do on the back end. On the front end, for the back end, the client will just go offline, will we'll shut his subscriptions and forget about him. Uh, but on the client side, we have a small component and it will know that he, he was offline and he, not, he needs to do the reconnections. And when we give a subscription, we, we give also a new query to, to, to query when he's online again. Uh, so when he will get back the network, it will do a classic GraphQL request to get fresh data and start his new subscriptions. Um, yeah. That's how we do that, but no, it's, it's always quirky to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you um, explain, um, but on the um, server side, hmm? when you have uh, to uh, develop your, I think, a client for um, to use a GraphQL uh, on the real time, did you have to? To uh, develop uh, a client on server, or you just have to listen some uh, some listening, or uh, I don't know, dispatching uh, on your database or GraphQL uh, system. So, if I understood the question correctly, is do you need to do something special on the back end to send updates? Yeah. 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 You have to. Uh, this is because GraphQL is not about how you change your data, or it doesn't know where is your database and it doesn't know anything. So what we do is that when one client will do a mutation over GraphQL, it will go through a scenario yeah. and it will write into the database and then we'll use the PubSub to send uh, uh, the events, yeah. But yeah. You, have, you have to do it on your own, yeah. It's, I think it's better like that. That yeah, you you use uh, a client or uh, just a database uh, system. We we do what? You uh, on your project? Did yeah. you use um, a system uh, like uh, events in uh, I don't know your database system or no. just in a client? No, 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 no. On no. the side. No, no. We have a separation between um, our database and how we handle events. Like we, okay. no, no. It's two different system. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, um, I guess it's quite a, a follow up to this question. So if I understand cor correctly, um, when there is a mutation uh, in your graph, you have to, on the back end, notify a function to then call the um, subscription mechanism and send it back to the client. Yeah. It's not handled uh, by GraphQL itself. No, no, no not at all. Okay, so you, you know if it's planned or you have to, no, no, I, I think it, it no, it, it, it will, they will not do that because GraphQL is really about just the query language of your API, but really not, Okay. they will not connect your mutation with your subscriptions. No, okay. they won't, they won't they, do that. Okay, they could, but uh, they yeah, they, do that they could, but actually if you if you think about that, maybe your public API is via REST, REST is not over GraphQL, okay. and you don't want to have coupling coupling system like, okay. like that. Yeah. And the mutation can occur from outside of the query itself. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>